Hello, my name is Dr. Adam Strauss from Westwood Mansfield Pediatric Associates, and I'm here tonight to talk to you about the basics of concussions. As always, this video is intended only for patients of Westwood Mansfield Pediatrics. If you or your child attend a different practice, please contact your provider for more information as he or she may have different opinions than those expressed in this video. A concussion is diagnosed when following a head injury, an individual develops any symptoms related to that head injury. Common symptoms seen in concussions include headaches, dizziness, vomiting or nausea, sleepiness or trouble sleeping, irritability or moodiness, sadness, feeling like you are in a fog or having difficulty concentrating, um, or generally not acting like yourself. Um, what happens inside the brain during a concussion? The brain sits inside the skull, and a concussion is caused when the skull stops and the brain continues moving within it. This is called a shearing injury. In the olden days, this was thought to cause a bruising in the brain. We currently believe that it is not so much a bruise that takes place, rather a metabolic chain of events. When the brain shears like this, the electrolytes in the brain change. First sodium changes, then calcium. The end result is low levels of glucose in the brain. Glucose is also known as sugar and is the main source of the brain's energy supply. It is believed that this low glucose brain level, brain level of glucose, is responsible for the majority of the symptoms seen in a headache. And it's for this reason that anything that increases the brain's energy demand is often going to exacerbate the symptoms and prolong the recovery period. For this reason, things such as reading or playing video games or running around and playing sports or going to school and thinking, even just being around loud noises or friends, sometimes texting on a cell phone, are all things that can exacerbate and worsen symptoms of a concussion. Because of this, when an individual does have a concussion, one of the hallmarks of management of that concussion is a concept called cognitive rest. This basically means shutting things down. Don't watch TV, don't play video games, don't text, certainly don't play sports for reasons I'll get to in a moment. Um, in other words, any activity that you might be doing that's making you feel worse is something that you should stop right away. When you suffer a concussion, your brain becomes vulnerable, it's injured. Just like when one sprains an ankle, things are susceptible to further injury until things are healed, when you have a concussion, your brain is susceptible as well. For this reason, it is crucial that you not sustain another blow to the head until your brain has fully recovered. The average concussion in a child lasts anywhere from three to 10 days worth of symptoms. Some will be worse, some won't be quite as bad. However, where kids really get into trouble is with something called the second impact syndrome. Should your child be suffering from a concussion and not fully recovered, when he or she receives a second blow, even a minor one, this might start a cascade of symptoms resulting in months of symptoms and being one of the so-called miserable minority. We want to do whatever we can for this not to happen. Therefore, should your child have a concussion, please call our office to arrange an appointment to discuss the important steps that need to be taken to protect your child's brain. For more information about the management and treatment of concussions, as well as how and when to return to play, please check out the other videos posted here. Thank you. Please don't hesitate to call us with any questions.